listening to the Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Vakula, here to help you travel the world at next to no cost through credit card points, miles, benefits, and rewards. Make money, save money, and take advantage of great deals. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com to contact me, find me on social media, read episode transcripts, and support the show with donations and use of referral links. More information at the end of the show. Thanks for joining me for episode 35, Chase 524 Rule, How Long to Wait. I discuss reasons why people may consider not waiting to be under 524. Those new and old to credit card and travel reward spaces will likely hear much about Chase's infamous 524 Rule. Long story short, with rare exceptions, you will be denied for business and personal Chase credit cards if you have opened five or more credit cards in the past 24 months, which show on your personal credit report. Most business cards do not impact 524, but Capital One, TD Bank, and UBS will add to your 524 account. Since Chase cards provide a great deal of value for many, even those who travel only a handful of times per year, I often recommend tailoring a credit card strategy to prioritize Chase so you don't miss great value. I encourage listeners to consider long-term strategy, often saying that you can get many credit cards at a later time, but once you're past 524, there's likely no turning back because waiting many, many months brings about significant opportunity cost. Embrace what many call the LOL 24 status. One may be able to continue acquiring valuable business cards instead of getting no new personal cards while on their 524 quest, but when running out of new business cards, the wait might not be worth it. Worse yet, in recent months, Chase Inc. business cards have been more difficult to obtain according to numerous data points across several groups and websites. People are getting denial reasons, even if they already have business credit cards with Chase, stating things like insufficient business structure or lack of business trade lines, especially when applying as a sole proprietor. Other denial reasons point to lack of business checking relationship with Chase or lack of funds, with some speculating that low average checking balances were insufficient. While I really like the Chase Sapphire Preferred in World of Hyatt cards, the three ink cards are likely to provide more value for most and were a main part of, shall we say, the 524 argument. If one is just starting in the credit card space, perhaps at 224, 124, 324, the argument for getting cards like World of Hyatt and Chase Sapphire Preferred should be obvious, assuming at least some Hyatt stays. But past that, there isn't a high amount of value absent ink cards. Chase Freedom might provide great value, but likely only for those maximizing spend on quarterly categories, and one can downgrade Chase Sapphire Preferred after a year to get the Freedom card without spending another 524 slot, waiting two or three months between Chase applications, and taking a hard inquiry. What though about those over 524? What's your breaking point? With 6 to 12 months remaining, perhaps one can justifiably wait, even without ink cards, depending on which business cards they likely can get and value, including the Barclays Aviator and JetBlue business cards, City American Airlines business, various American Express business credit and charge cards, Bank of America business cards, U.S. Bank business cards, and Wells Fargo business cards. However, Barclays may deny you if you are over 624. Bank of America, like Chase, is getting tighter on business card approval, although they sometimes allow one to open a 13-month Certificate of Deposit, or CD, to secure a business card. Wells Fargo only allows one business card per 15 months, and you may have to open a business checking account and have forms from your state showing you have a business. But the rules across branches and states vary. U.S. Bank is the strictest here, not only because they are inquiry sensitive, as I've discussed in episodes 33 and 17, but also because they are looking for older EINs and reporting trade lines. Your mileage may vary. American Express is great here, perhaps the best business card issuer, and maybe even the best issuer, because you can have four total credit cards, down from five, business and personal combined, and up to 10 charge cards. After your first Amex card, new Amex cards will likely be soft pulls, which allow you to not only get more cards with Amex, but also with other issuers. Amex is usually very lenient, but recent data points of recent applications from listeners of this show point to many, many declines for those brand new to American Express, likely because of the current pandemic. 6 to 12 months might be worth the wait for even two or three Chase personal cards if one can get multiple business cards, but even then there are more arguments for not waiting. What if Chase gets stricter? 
American Express, as I mentioned, now only allows customers to have four credit cards instead of five. Other banks, I also mentioned, are tightening. What if Chase will only allow one credit card every six months? Maybe Chase will allow one to only have two or three credit cards total, only allowing people to have four or more cards if they are grandfathered in. What if the strictness surrounding business cards continues throughout 2021 and even beyond? Which personal cards will you miss while you're waiting? Missing out on cards like the City Costco Visa card will not be much of a loss. I spoke about this in episode 15, Popular Cards to Avoid, arguing why the card does not provide great total value, even though it has some bonus categories. If one really wants the card for some reason, they can get it at a much later time, well after 524, if low on card options. So why apply for it early in your credit card journey when you can instead get a more valuable card, especially with Chase? We won't miss the City Costco card, but what about the current increased offer on the UBS business card I reviewed on episode 25? The card easily offers more than $1,000 in value in year one for most, and the offer is set to expire July 31st, perhaps to never return. The card is absolutely worth a 524 slot in my mind. Other solid personal cards like the American Express Personal Gold card are available too, but you'll probably be able to get it later with a high sign-up bonus. So that can wait, although those spending more than $25,000 at grocery stores will surely be missing out on that bonus four times category. What about the Schwab Platinum card with American Express? This too can be worth a 524 slot, especially for those with large balance of membership rewards points they want to cash out to make more money investing or even withdrawing. We see opportunity costs, especially in limited time offers, like the UBS card I mentioned. One might, like I am at the moment, use some time waiting to be under 524 to get cards like the Altitude Reserve card which is usually difficult to obtain because U.S. Bank wants to see six months of no opened accounts or hard inquiries. Maybe one inquiry or opened account will be fine, but more will likely be a decline. Even then, I might be declined if U.S. Bank looks back 12 months or declines me for some other reason. In my mind, the altitude reserve is worth the 524 slot, but it might not be for everyone. Returning to cards to wait to be under 524 for... I really like the World of Hyatt card, not only because of its 50,000 point sign-up bonus, but also for its additional free night certificate when one spends $15,000. More spend can also lead to high status levels with Hyatt and milestone perks, which can give lounge access, room upgrades, and more. The World of Hyatt card, then, can be especially good for spending, which doesn't fall into bonus categories. As usual, high spenders stand to gain most from credit cards. Low spenders likely won't reach the $15,000 spend goal and won't fully benefit. Chase Sapphire Preferred is wonderful mostly for its 60,000 point signup bonus and the ability to transfer points to Hyatt and Airlines. However, after the signup bonus, the card lacks a punch and continued spending isn't very attractive when one can instead find better bonus categories on other cards and work towards new signup bonuses. Some, especially low spenders without other Chase cards and infrequent travelers, may also downgrade the card in year two. The Chase airline and hotel cards can be nice, but on my estimation, they aren't much more valuable than cards offered by other issuers. Some frequent travelers will benefit greatly from the Southwest Companion Pass if they can get it, although maybe not so much benefit considering the current pandemic. A possible upgrade to the Ritz-Carlton card can also be nice, but the IHG and Bonvoy cards lacking an increased offer aren't so special. I'm not a fan of the Chase Amazon Visa, another card I suggest most should avoid in episode 15, because it doesn't provide great overall value for low spenders, and there are many ways to save on Amazon. The Starbucks and Disney cards are really subpar. Freedom and Freedom Unlimited are okay, but have low signup bonuses and low overall value unless, again for the freedom, one is maximizing the five times quarterly categories. Hopefully these thoughts will help you better evaluate if it's worth waiting several months to be under 524. As always, there's no one perfect strategy for everyone, but I'm happy to work with you to provide tailored recommendations after learning more about your current situation. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com and complete my free credit card questionnaire for a free consultation. Returning to 524, high spenders who can reach many signup bonuses and get many new cards will likely suffer most when waiting, compared to low spenders who will not quickly reach new cards' minimum spend requirements. I always aim to work on a sign-up bonus, rather than just settling for 2% or 2 times back on my spending, well aware of the fact that waiting for new cards, especially if waiting for 524, 
can come with significant cost. I hope you enjoyed this episode, something different than my usual fare, and you can have a better plan concerning your 524 status in the present or future. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more content. Visit my website at hurdygurdytravel.com where you can contact me, read episode transcripts, complete a free credit card questionnaire to receive tailored recommendations, follow me on social media, listen to past episodes, and subscribe to my mailing list. Support my work through Patreon, PayPal, the Cash App, and referral links by visiting the Donate tab on my website. Subscribe on YouTube at Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast. Like my Hurdy Gurdy Travel Podcast Facebook page, follow HG Travel Podcast on Twitter, and follow Justin Vacula on Instagram. V A C U L A. I'll be live streaming from YouTube with business coach Cakeology on Tuesdays and Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern as shelter in place time continues. We'll talk about all things money, business, and credit while answering questions from a live audience. Find announcements for upcoming streams and archives of past live streams on my website at hurdygurdytravel.com. Schedule a free 15-minute consultation with Cakeology, who can help you formally establish your business, build business credit, and get premium business credit cards. When you select from various paid services after my free consultation, I will receive credit for referring you. Listen to Cakeology on episode 12 of my podcast. Visit my other podcast at stoicsolutionspodcast.com, S-T-O-I-C, where you can find practical wisdom for everyday life inspired by the ancient philosophers of Greece and Rome. Thanks to generous patrons and fans of this podcast who help support my work. Have a great day. 